Welcome to Live Let Thrive, a podcast about the Airbnb life, the share economy, and everything in between. Here are your hosts, Micah and Steve. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome back to another exciting episode of Live Let Thrive. Thrive. Uh, Stevie Stacks. Micah, man, what's happening? Chilling, man, chilling, chilling. It's another what episode cool day. This? What Epis- you Episode 93. 93. Moving light along. And we got a special guest on. We have our boy David Flippit Weems on. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? We call, we call you the DF Dub. DFW. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're, we're, at, we're in the DFW area right here. So that's cool. DFW, David Flippit Weems. Yeah, yeah. All right. it works for me. <laughs> but man, man. So, like, I, I, I kind of give everybody a background story of how I found you. You were, you had posted your uh, videos in the little Airbnb group. You know, people hated on you. You know how that goes. Uh, <laughs> Those are the best videos. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But man, I, you said you're making six figures on two houses. Tell the people Sir. how that's possible. So uh, it's pretty simple. I got the one house is a duplex, so I have two apartments there. And then next door, I decided to take a little bit of a risk. And the house had been abandoned for like 15 years. And I'm looking at it and I was like, okay, maybe I could switch this one into a duplex too. So I go down to the uh, zoning and permits office and they say that we're grandfathered in as single families. They're not letting us do any more duplexes in my area. So I was like, man, I already bought this house. It was like 38,000 for the show. And uh, I couldn't do my original plan. So then I started getting a little creative. And I'm like, okay, if I put, can put suites in here, then I could probably still make the money. So it has four suites. Each one has a bedroom, a bathroom, and a living room. So then I had to check the regulations on, you know, like how many people could be inside of a single family house. It turns out that where I'm at, there's no regulations on guests. There's regulations on people who are living there full time. Like let's say I had a traditional lease then I couldn't do, I could only do three people who aren't related in one house. But being that I do Airbnb and I don't let anyone stay for more than 30 days, I'm not regulated in that sense. So that's how the money comes in. Um, the, the suites go for about $40 during the week and 65 on the weekend plus a $15 cleaning fee. And this month I'm at a little bit over 10,000, about 10, five. So that's it. And, and and so that's kind of funny because it, it's like the opposite of how it's been working lately. How like we if you you get all kinds of advantages if you're a long term renter, but if you're a short term under thirty days, you don't get any advantages and you get shut down. But you over there where you're at is flipped it on its head. You get advantages because it's a short term rental. That's kind of that blows my mind, man. Yeah. So explain that. What do you, what do you mean? You get disadvantages for for short-term rentals where you're at over here they're ban- they're they're banning short-term rentals everywhere and you're in texas in north texas yeah oh, wow. yeah you think it'd be like some kind of um liberal state doing some stuff like that for rent control reasons and stuff but texas is going crazy over here man it's probably because of the hotel industry they got lobbyists that's a big that's what we think it is too yeah it hotel to industry also cities and you can tell when it's going to happen the easiest way to tell is if the city is not going to partner with Airbnb on paying taxes. There's only one city in the state of Texas that partnered with Airbnb and it's Plano. What's that? Oh, Plano. I, I assume it would be Austin. <laughs> oh, no. Austin. They hate Airbnb down there. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, it's one of the most strict places down there. Yeah, Austin. They wow. Don't... I would have never thought that Texas, of oh. all places, would want more regulation. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, where, are you, where are you based out of? Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh. Oh, you in Pittsburgh? Oh man, I I'm know in that. Pittsburgh. So the so I know those Steeler games bring in that money, right? Oh, the Steelers games, we stay packed. I mean, it's every every one of my six units goes every time there's a Steelers game. But oh. they're actually getting ready to put the the country's first man-made lagoon in about two miles away from the properties. So Ooh. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, in the summers <laughs> I do pretty well anyway, but you know, that's that's a that's gonna be a game changer for us. Oh yeah, you market that right. You in there? 
So this crisis. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been doing the Airbnb game? How long have you been in it? I started in 16 and I had one unit. I think I did around 24,000. Then by July of 17, I had the downstairs of the duplex ready to go. And I did 44 and 17 from the whole year with the upper apartment. And then just from July on with the lower apartment. And then in 18, I finished up construction on the house next door, which is the four unit suite. And uh, that year I did 120. So 120 and then I rented, well, I'm not even going to go into that, but I, I did 130 in rentals. You know, I, I did have, I can't, it's, I had one tenant who was there for like most of the year, but there was only one permanent tenant there. So I was still under that three threshold, you know. Nice. So you got, you got into this game because you were originally, what were you doing originally doing, flipping? Yeah, I started out real estate flipping. And uh, it was just, man, you know, I do a lot of the work myself. So after spending all this time and, you know, your knees and your back is sore and everything, and I'm like, man, I sell the house. Yeah, I make like 50 grand or something. Then I have to reinvest it all. I can't even buy a car out of it because I don't want to pay capital gains tax. <laughs> and, you know, I just didn't like the whole scenario. So I'm like, you know what? Let me start buying houses to hold. And I ended up in stumbling into Airbnb through construction. Wow. One of my contractors, they saw that uh, they like my floor plans. So I do all the floor plans and everything too. So this one guy over on the south side, he had a house and he wanted to switch it from a one unit to a two unit. So he wanted to pay me for a floor plant plan. Then we get over there and start talking. He was like, yeah, I'm doing it for Airbnb. I'm like, what is Airbnb? I, you know, I used to always stay at like the Hilton or something. I'm like, what is Airbnb? He started explaining to me. I went home and started doing my Googles. And uh, I said, whoa, you can make money like that? So I just ended up in, I had just bought the duplex at that point. And I ended up in just renovating it for Airbnb. Ooh, man. man that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. It was like a crazy risk, but it actually ended up working out, you know, looking back on it. And really, if it wasn't for Airbnb, I wouldn't even be able to get into the group home thing. So, you know, you just want to diversify your income a little bit in case regulations or anything else happens, you know? Definitely, definitely. So, when you've been doing it, you said two years? So, three years, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been like, th it's a little over three now. So, like, three years, you know, and I always ask people, I like to ask people, like, how are you on automations? Like, are you still hands-on, or is it, most of it takes care of itself? I'm, I'm hands-on. I do all my cleaning. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm cheap. I, I, want, I want all the money. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do my cleaning. I do my messages back and forth. I do everything. But, you know, I've been doing this for so long that it's just, you know, I just send out a message, no problem. Yeah. yeah. You like speak. Automations? Do it yourself. Is that, what that what you, is that what you meant by automations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how okay. automated are you? You still hands-on? Yeah, very hands-on. What about y'all? Are y'all you, you, hands-on with it? I, I am. I'm, I'm kind of hands-on with it. Uh, Micah gives me shit about it. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, my... When, when I had an Airbnb up and running, my wife was doing the turnover. So every time, you know, if I, if I wasn't working overtime, I'd get off early and I'd go help her finish turnover. And one time he'd be calling and he'd say, hey, man, what's up? I was like, uh, you know, I'm here trying to scrub in these toilets right quick. He's like, what the hell are you doing that shit for? <laughs> so he makes fun of me. But hey, man, I was just helping my wife. <laughs> you got to pay someone for that. You got to out of me. Nah, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very hands off. Like I've been... I started two years ago, 2017, February. Okay. I just, it was too too much for me, so I had to be hands-off. It was too much. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so. I've been hands-off for a while now. It, it, it helps, you know. Um, the thing is, when I tell people to be hands-off, I'm rather create your own systems and go off that, because property management companies with Airbnb, I'm not, well, I'm not about to pay nobody 20%. I'm like, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. That's, yeah. that's what I was getting quoted for. I'm like, man, I can't do that. Yeah, I got expensive right. lifestyle. Like, I, you know, I, no, no, I need that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 20, at I first, was, I was looking to hire. I was just trying to hire a cleaner and, you know, pay like $10, $15 an hour for them to come in and turn it over. And I realized the problem with that is uh, most cleaners want, or most employees want a guaranteed schedule. And with Airbnb, I don't necessarily know if someone's going to book four of the apartments for three days and then only two of them are turning over on those couple of days, you know? So, you know where I'm starting to go? Well, do you, if you do turnover B&B, you can get 
peep cleaners like that on the turnover B and B app. Now, what you really, really want to do though, if you, go, I'm gonna give you this advice before you get on there. Charge people by the hour. Be like, hey, I pay twelve an hour. Then your cleaning fee, you can take most of it home with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's how your hands off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I use like turnover maybe <laughs> price labs. I pretty any system I can find that makes it so I don't have to talk yes or anything like that. I, I try to use. And then what do you end up in? Uh, what percentage do you end up in paying out? To be like I'll, I'll pay them like right now. I have a fixed rate. I'm paying my cleaner here. I think I'm paying her like seventy five dollars a cleaning. But okay. Now I know in the future I'm only charging them. I'm paying them by the hour. So I say, see if you can charge them ten to twelve dollars an hour. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, okay. You're charging fifty dollars to clean. They done yeah. it four at twelve times four. What forty eight dollars? Hopefully they get done in three. You take a little bit on at home with you. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, so you started with the duplex, and then you bought the one next to you, which was abandoned. I'm sure you had to do a whole remodel on that thing, right? Yeah, that was crazy. It, they, there was a, homeless people in it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the raccoons, the rats. Like, there was so much. The people who had the house before, they had, hey, how you doing? They had uh, um, dogs that they left in the house for I guess in a couple years, and they would just come over to let the dogs out like every couple of days. So the sub floors, everything was just filled with piss. It was a disgusting project. It was crazy. Damn. I used to get done working over there. And uh, at the time I was living in the basement of the duplex. I built like another apartment down there just so I could, you know, like put all my money into building out the new spot. Didn't want to pay any rent at that time or, you know, mortgage on a personal place. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would get done working and come back over to my apartment and you could smell the ammonia on your clothes from just being inside that area. It was disgusting. Jeez. That's happy. That's good that you got to get out. You know what I'm saying? You got to get, you know, you got your equity, you got your sweat equity out of it. So. Oh yeah. The best part about it was I spent about, I spent 38 on the house, another hundred thousand to rehab it. And uh, it appraised for 260. So Ooh. I was, I was pretty happy with it. <laughs> Did you pull the money out? Oh yeah, I'm, I threw a mortgage on for 150, so I could do. I have another project about four blocks away, and it's it's a uh, it's gonna be a three suite house. It has all the drywall up, everything that uh, all the mechanicals are in. I just need to put the kitchens and bathrooms in. So uh, on your suites, because I want to really know how that business model works. On your suites, they don't have a kitchen, or how how does the kitchen work? The kitchen, I kind of liken it to like a. Uh, to a hotel lobby. So the kitchen's a shared space and you know anybody can hang out there. It's like a it's like a kitchen dining room, you know, combination. Okay. So it's a com it's a common area. Okay. Yeah, common area. And I like that suites idea. And how many suites are in there? Four. Four suites. So it actually, I mean, it kind of worked out better for you than the, doing a duplex, right? Mm, I charge about half for the suites. Oh, okay. So, I mean, well, you know what? It definitely works out to be better because I have the cleaning fees on it too. So yeah, it definitely does work out to be better. Uh, I don't really keep track of like what each unit's were making. I just, of course, look at, you know, like how much I'm pulling in on Airbnb. And uh, the, here, sorry about that. I don't want the signal to get messed up from the window. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I don't, I don't even know exactly how much that house is pulling in, but I say that there. It seems like each suite's probably about twenty four hundred usually, is what I pull in from each one. I mean, for me, each, each each unit, each unit, should I say? And the suites book out a lot faster, or a lot. My um, occupancy percentage is a lot better with the suites, and when people want to go for long term stays, they usually get the suites. Wow. The suites have a queen size bed. And that's it. So there's a full size couch inside the living room of two of them. The other two upstairs, they have love seats. And uh, I think I, I advertise for three on the bottom level and two up top. But usually it's just two people inside of each suite. Man, I really thought that one out, man. That's taking it to another level. <laughs> yeah. <I'm, laughs> I like doing different things as far as like, you know, building different concepts as far as like floor plans and things of that nature. So. 
it worked out perfect, you know, to build it for Airbnb because you can actually get paid for it opposed to if you're flipping, then, you know, who's going to buy that, you know? They want a standard layout. They want something familiar. That's cool. That's cool, though, because you bought um, – yeah, this thing's doing weird stuff. Because um, you were able to uh, buy one right next to you. You kind of raised the, the value of, of even the one you had before, right? Yeah, yeah. I already put the mortgage on the one before. That one went on at 220 And as y'all know, duplexes, multifamilies in general, they're not – you don't get as much money for those as you do single family because right. usually only investors buy it. So the people who are buying them is a lot smaller, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the single family came back at 260, the duplex was at 220. Man. And, okay. uh, that's why I'm, okay. what'd you say? Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay, so that's the reason why I buy in the same area because every year whenever I'm doing one, I know that I have a comp you know, in that same area. And I, I can always pretty much be sure of how much that house is going to come back at, you know. So are you, so you looking for more abandoned houses to buy? Yeah, the one that I bought over on Falk, that one, it was funny because I was playing around with wholesale real estate last summer. And uh, I was telling my neighbor, because I actually got some, uh, some banners made for my, for my truck. that say, like, you know, like we buy houses type thing. And uh, my neighbor was like, hey, what's all that about? I had been talking to him about it for a second. He's like, you know, I got a house a few blocks over. I've been waiting to sell it. So that house was another deal like the one that I bought, 3548, the abandoned house. So uh, 1613, which is the new one, it was abandoned for like 12 years. And it was the same deal. I had to gut everything, all new everything, all new HVAC, plumbing, electrical, you know, floor plans, drywall, like just everything. Only thing that that house had was good windows, but everything else we had to tear out. <laughs> so yeah, I like I like doing it that way because I plan on holding the houses for a long time, and I just want to know that everything's good with it. I won't have any headaches. It has all new pecs going through it. The stacks are PVC. The uh, furnaces I, I use high efficiency furnaces. I get the wall spray foam. So my utilities on the house they're pretty low too. I think I'm running that whole four person house for. A hundred and thirty-five thousand for one hundred and thirty-five dollars is why I spend the heat for it. So I mean, it's in the winter in Pennsylvania. It really makes sense to get all new everything, you know. Nice. Um, I was gonna say. So, so who is your um, target renter? Who who is the people that you uh, you like you like to rent to, or what kind of people come through? Um, it's it's wow. It's all different types. I, I'll tell you my least favorite are local renters. But, um, I mean, usually, you know, it's like I've ran into a lot of issues as far as like parties, um, just, you know, just different issues with local people. But I like, uh, I'd say I probably like the hospital employees the best, but I don't necessarily market to anybody. I just throw it up on Airbnb and let it do what it does. Okay. So which unit are they usually partying in? The... First floor of the duplex. It's a it has a big kitchen and you know it's like a it's a nice looking unit and people see that and I guess you know it has a big deck too. So it's it's yeah that one I have to like really watch closely. I, I just change my welcome message to like reiterate the house rules before they show up and all kinds of stuff. But it's usually that luxury premium apartment. The um, shower, what's it called? The rain shower? The Oh, yeah, they all have the rain heads, but uh, <laughs> all six of them have rain heads. But the luxury is, I'm going to try to pull up a picture real fast. Because, yeah, that rain head thing was cool, man. I w I'd like to install something like that. That would be taking it to the next level. Yeah. You know what? I get so many good reviews about that. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, I, I was saying, yeah, I like those rain heads as well. Those are dope. I uh, appreciate it. You know, they're really cheap on Amazon. Oh, that's where you get them? Yeah, I order them right off of Amazon. I think they're like, uh, they're under $60. Oh, dang. dang. They're easy to install? Well, yeah, they're easy for me to install because I have the plumbers run the water lines up. So it's just oh, screwing cool. it in like a normal shower. But uh, if you don't have that, I was at the Omni 
No, it was the W, the W Hotel in uh, Buckhead, Georgia, like right in Atlanta. And they had some rain heads that came out of the wall, out of their regular shower head feature. But it was like an elongated uh, neck that kind of held it out over you, up and over you. And it was a little eight inch shower head, but it, it gave you the same kind of feel because they have all the little small pressurized water jets that come out and hit you. So it was still real relaxing when you were in there. That's the way you could do it if you don't want to, you know, like get into tearing the ceiling out and running, you know, your water lines up and everything. <laughs> so, question for you: How many Airbnbs do you plan on getting? Uh, well, there's I've I've been working on this ODP business, so it's like you know you get paid through Medicare. I'm always worried about a recession. Like if a recession hits, will people still travel the same way? Like, will I have to? lower my prices more. I don't like that Airbnbs constantly adding more hosts. And that kind of like, they, they try, try to force you to put your prices down. And I've been doing pretty well with it. But, uh, you know, I, it's just having one business makes me a little nervous. So I'm not sure exactly how many Airbnbs I'm going to end up with. But I mean, as long as it's working, I'll keep on doing it. But, uh, you know, right now I'm working on another business where I can do some more. But, you know, like you're, I have a friend she literally has two houses. She turned over eight hundred thousand last year from having four uh, four residents inside of the house. So you uh, okay? So if in Pennsylvania or really everywhere, because Medicare is a nationwide thing, but people who have intellectual disabilities, they did a lot of studies and they found out that whenever you take them out of a big facility and take them into like a smaller facility, one you get to integrate them with the community. And then secondly, they're, I guess they're, uh, I can't think of the right word right now, but they're able to function on a higher level. They assess them on like a numerical scale. And whenever they're inside of a smaller environment with only like two or three people inside the house, they actually do better. So the state and the government, they pay out a lot of money to make sure that you can provide a service for them where they can live as close to possible as an everyday life. And they basically pay you to, to, you know, create a program and you have to have a CEO, a CFO. Um, you go through a whole bunch of inspections and clearances and you have to build a whole business around it, supporting staff, RNs, all kinds of stuff. But once you get up and running each, she, I think it's 500 a day per resident that she has and she has four. So it's $2,000 a day. It was a little bit over 800000 is what it worked out to be. You're paid through Medicare. Medicare has never missed a payment since its inception in the 60s. So that's something that I was like, okay, if I open up this business, then I can keep on investing. Another thing that I run into problems with Airbnb is I have to always have a house that's free and clear because the bank won't give me loans to build Airbnbs. I have to build a house, then put a mortgage on it, and then I can use that money to do my new Airbnb. So it's been like kind of tough for me to get money to fund it. So I was looking for businesses where I could make a lot more and I can just self-finance, you know? Yeah. Wells Fargo for Airbnb? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That might have been like the one bank that I didn't call. <laughs> 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 I talked to last year when I was putting the mortgage on, I wanted to just put the mortgage straight on the new project and leave my last one, you know, free and clear. But I was talking to PNC and um, all kinds of different dollar bank, uh, first um, key bank or a bunch of them. And they were all like, no, that's, they don't count Airbnb money as rental income. Are you running your Airbnb business through an LLC or through your personal name? I'm running it through my personal name. Uh, man, S switch yeah. it to an LLC. So your 1099 okay. is coming in through your LLC. And if you get two years of that, you take that to Wells Fargo, they'll get you a loan. Hmm. Yeah, they gave me a loan. Okay. Airbnb. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking notes right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, real quick. Turnover B&B and Wells Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you, the, the medical field thing, you said you have to get approved. Cause it's, 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 it's pretty much assisted living, right? Exactly. Man, you know, it's funny. I've been talking about assisted living for a long time. I've been trying to find somebody who knows that market. And what you said is perfect. You said the healthcare industry has never missed a beat 
I talked to uh, one of our past guests named Adam. He told me if you ever want to truly be recession proof, you have to get in the medical care field. It has to be in the medical field. Yeah, that's the reason why I was getting. And then, you know what the funny thing is about it? I've never been involved with an industry where you get paid to be compassionate. I mean, it's like just since, since I've been shadowing and going through all the trains, like we did do 40 hours of dual diagnosis. I had to do face-to-face trains with ODP and ISP, which is like basically how they communicate what that individual's needs are. And the bottom line is you're just there to support them. You're, you know, you're just trying to help them be able to live a better life. And, you know, you're doing their meal plans and all kinds of stuff, but you make enough money that you can hire a full staff to run that business. And you can finally be hands off where with Airbnb, I mean, maybe if my lifestyle wasn't as expensive, then I could, you know, I could do that. But for where I'm at, I need to be able to make, you know, a lot of money in order to be hands off where I can just pay people to do all that work, you know? So, yeah, yeah I mean, the cool. field is, it's, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it when first started telling me. Once. Okay, I was gonna ask also, David, um, like, on, on the, and seeing the videos you make, and those are pretty cool, those are pretty dope. Um, do you have like the furniture? Is it seems kind of cool. What do you What do you end up getting the furniture at? And do you do your, do your own decorating? Yeah, I do all of it. I do the decorating, the color schemes, all of it. Um, I've been getting a lot from my from my IKEA uh, suites, the one with the gray carpet. All of that stuff came from IKEA. Um, and over at the duplex, that furniture came from American Freight. I don't know if you guys have that down there. No. That's like a discount. That's like a discount furniture store. So I noticed that the furniture doesn't really matter as much as the uh, color schemes throughout the house. Huh. That's interesting. That's interesting. But and you gotta keep in mind, I'm I'm at a lower market. Like I'm guessing that you guys probably might do higher end or you know something like that. But like mines are, you know, I have the the suites are forty dollars a night during the week. You know, so it's my apartments. I think the the luxury premium goes for like one twenty. You know, so it's these are lower end units, you know. Like I have some that are in like high rises downtown. I also have some that are in uh because I remember I remember on one of your videos you said my my Airbnbs are in the hood. Well <laughs> <laughs> I have one that's kind of by the by the hood. So and, and also I was thinking like if you really, really want to make money with Airbnbs, you have to get them at a certain price point. Like even if a recession hits. I think you also have to look at like me and you, you're, we're buying. So like all three of us are buying, we have to make sure the long-term numbers work just in case we have to fall back and yeah. we have to get it at a right price point. That's what I've been noticing with Airbnb. If you don't get it at that, where your, your mortgage is 500, $800 a month, you know, it starts to cut into profits. Yeah. It starts to get a little hairy, especially in uh, January, February and March. You're like, Oh no. <laughs> 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 so that that's what I was gonna ask. I mean, because the furniture it looks cool, the the whole scheme you did. And it's like uh it's very minimalist. And so I was thinking, well, was I mean budget. Yeah, that's what I <laughs> 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 and that's what I put like in, in in one of my in furnished places, I put like that. And we took a very minimalistic approach, you know. Exactly. This is that it just means I don't have money to buy a bunch of furniture. <laughs> but um but it it works out good because people it, it, I've heard it put like this before. Because people that like, go and stay at hotels or stay at like you know nicely done places, their their houses themselves that they have is full of clutter everywhere. They got stuff all over the place. They want to go to a place that doesn't have a lot of clutter that they can just breathe and relax and they you know clear their yeah. mind. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. that, that's that's what yours looks like. Yeah, it looks very minimalistic. So no knickknacks. A, yeah, yeah. So you you take a girl there. You know you can hang out and have a good time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She don't gotta see the wife's picture. Now I'm playing. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't say that. <laughs> hey, person being single, I can make those kind of jokes. <laughs> As our wives in the other rooms. Yeah, I know, right? They hey, listen you know. to this. Yeah, black love, we're great. <laughs> so, so. Like you said, you because I, I like your strategy. You're going 100 percent buying. Do you ever ever plan on like arbitraging a place in the future? You know what? Because I actually leased the facility I'm getting ready to do for the intellectual disabilities, and uh, it's a townhouse inside of like an apartment complex. 
I never knew that you could just do a corporate lease and you can sublease to whoever you want to. So I never knew that that was even an option. But um, no, I probably wouldn't because only reason why I wouldn't is because uh, one, the rental values, especially inside the nice apartment complexes, they're pretty expensive here. I mean, we got a lot going on with like Google and Duolingo and just like a bunch of big companies that came into Pittsburgh and man, they shot those rental prices up. So I would, I have to make sure that if I'm renting somewhere, I want it to be a business that's making money hand over fist. And with Airbnb, I'd be a little bit worried about the margins, but I've never done any research on it. So I'm sure, you know, there's ways to make money with it, but you know, I, I just don't know anything about that side of things. Now, neither one of you guys do it that way, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I do it. Oh, you do it through arbitrage, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I try, to do, I try to kind of keep it balanced. Like, I do arbitrage. I have a handful of arbitrage, and then I have places that I own. So I do it both. Um, the arbitrage is more for short term, and it's just pretty much – it's a cash play. It just gives you reserves. While the, oh, okay. what you own, it gives you the cash, and it gives you the equity, of course, you know. That's that's really smart. I like it. I never even thought about doing that because yeah, you're guaranteed. So what? How long are you signing your leases for? Well, arbitrage and residential, anyways. I'm getting a year lease. Um, okay. Now, I, we've had Kim and Ann on, and they're doing it through commercial buildings, and I like it a little bit better because they're getting a ten year lease on a commercial building. Then they break the units up to whatever they want. But that's the issue with being an arbitrage. After a year, you either gotta get up, and get out. But the good thing about a corporate lease is they will keep your rent the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, I, uh, I got to do a little research into that. Oh, yeah. So, so David, do they, um, have they been like any murmuring, any talks about um, putting regulations on Airbnb in your area? Not that I'm aware of. So whenever I was talking to my lawyer, uh, this is probably about, two years ago whenever I was like, okay, you know, I'm really gonna hit the gas on this Airbnb thing. The first thing he said when I said Airbnb was, oh my God, don't do it. So I was like, whoa, what, <laughs> what's going on? What are, what, what, what's, you know, like, what's happening out there? And he said that he had a guy that was in Forest Hills, which is a little borough uh, outside of Pittsburgh. And he actually got kicked out of the borough. They went back and changed their laws so that you couldn't lease out a space for under 30 days, I think it was. And whenever I told him that mines were actually in the city of Pittsburgh, he was like, okay, I think you're a lot more safe because, you know, they make a lot of money in Pittsburgh. They charge us a 15% sales tax here in Allegheny County. So, you know, like there's, they worked out some kind of structure enough to say that, okay, you guys can do it, but we want paid more. So... You know, I, I don't think that that's going to be an issue anytime soon, but you know how that goes. You know, um, somebody just got shot at a, uh, there was an Airbnb downtown, like a little bit, probably like two, three minutes outside of downtown. They had a house party there and someone got shot and killed at the party. Mm-hmm. That made the news, went around the news. So like, if there was a lot of stuff that happened like that, who knows, regulations could come pretty fast. But that's the first time I've heard of anything wild happening in Pittsburgh with Airbnb. A website to see if your county connects, collects taxes, if Airbnb collects the taxes for you. It looks like Allegheny County, County it does. So I think yeah. you're in a safe zone. Yeah, but when stuff like that happens, that bad press is also another one, man. Because, yeah, that bad press is hard. It can kill you, especially when they're lobbyists. Like, we told you it's been happening. You know, it's like – that's one thing that I understand. I'm, I think it's against the T of the terms of service in order to say anything necessarily bad, but that's one thing I don't understand about Airbnb <clears throat> is why the parties are even like, I'm, I'm sure there's some way to control that. Like they, from what I understand, if you catch someone getting ready to throw a party at your, at your unit and you tell Airbnb best case scenario, they'll move them out of yours, but try to find them somewhere else to go on the platform. And it's like, I think the parties are what's really getting a lot of bad press. Because other than that, there's not too much you can say. Well, property values and all that kind of stuff, too. That's yeah, their argument. Yeah. Anyway. And that is a problem. Them, okay, if they're throwing a party over here, they come back and they, they try to put them in another Airbnb, still have the same problem. So 
Yeah, and I, I don't really know how they're gonna control it because I don't know. That's a that's a that's a good one. I don't know how they're controlling that, that's because because that is the main press. <laughs> well, people are throwing parties. That's like the main bad press about it. Yeah, I, it was I funny guess. because right before I came. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You go ahead. Right before I came over to do the pod, I walked out from the from the facility. And the owner, she was like, oh, my daughter just got an Airbnb. I said, oh, okay, that's cool. She said, yeah, they were busting kids out there. They had a big party. So I'm glad you didn't get mine. She said, we saw yours on there, but we didn't get yours. I was like, wow. <laughs> they were busting kids out to this party. I said, oh, my God, that's crazy. <laughs> but it didn't make the news, so there's that. <laughs> Jeez, that's insane. Yeah, Fifty Cent was at an Airbnb party about two weeks ago. Oh, I assumed that was a hotel. I saw the video whenever he was walking in there when Fifty Cent was walking into the room. I just assumed it was a hotel room. That was a condo. Yeah, no, nah, it was a uh, yeah. One of them was an Airbnb, and it made the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so, hey, if somebody, and I had a question for you, just to. You know, if someone wanted to get started in Airbnb today, like what would your advice to them be? My advice would be to be easy going. Like don't let, you know, guests who come in and do things that are against your rules. Don't focus on the bad, you know, focus on the nice guests. Like you're going to have people who are annoying or people who message you every couple seconds about stupid stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, it, I think it has a lot to do with your personality and how you're treating the guest. And I would say that if you're super nice on the message, that's all it really takes. Like you're going to get a five star review most of the time, as long as you can build a rapport with them over through the message. I mean, I've had guests that had problems, but I've stayed 4.9 star super host the whole time I've been on the platform. And I kind of use the, uh, you know, if you go out of the country to a resort, the way they treat you, like how they're, you know, they're, you can't do any wrong. They're like, oh, yes, Mr. Williams, we will do whatever for you. Like, whatever you need, you know, it does, it's just that out of the country type of treatment. And that's kind of what I give them. But it's really just through the messages. I mean, I don't really do anything special when they get here. I don't give them any gifts or hold up little fancy towels for them or anything like that. But, um, you know, it's like they, they seem to really like it. It's great customer service. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> In three words. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, it's funny because Micah automates his whole customer service. So no matter what the, what well, you have an AI? Uh, yeah, a little bit of AI and a VA. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like I time messages and then um, the AI takes a little while to figure out because it has to react off certain keywords. So like if somebody asks about the Wi-Fi, the AI has to catch it and then it'll send a response. I use um, Smart BNB, and it, it pretty much you have to like set up little keywords like location, you know, to send them the address. Um, if it's Wi-Fi, you know, send the Wi-Fi password. So yeah, it's like little automations like that. That's amazing, and it, and it really works flawlessly. Like your guests like it. Yeah, yeah. like sometimes I'm up, most of the time I don't even talk. I haven't talked to guests. I think I talked to a guest today because he had an issue with uh, one of his reservations down in Marble Falls, but that's about it. Most of the time, I don't talk to him. That's a way better way to do it. That's a, <laughs> a way better way to do it. Everything that I gave as far as advice for first time people, you wouldn't have to worry about any of that if you just, you know, if you're hands off. Yeah, it, 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 it takes a while to get there. But yeah, once you're hands off, it, it really helps. You know, you can, you can, cause like, man, the reason why I learned real quick, I had to be hands off cause the first time me and my wife went on a trip, man, I was getting hit up. Me and my wife were trying, couldn't enjoy ourselves down in Cozumel, Mexico. I was like, ah. So <laughs> the next time, we just got back from the Bahamas. It was a breeze. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. And yeah, that's that's the way that you want your business to be. I mean, that's that's perfect. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, of course. Man, yeah, I feel like that's like any entrepreneur. Like that's the first book you read. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, every time I'm over there cleaning, I'm like, man, uh, Robert T. Kiyosaki wouldn't approve. 
that's yeah, funny. that's cool. Though. So how many units do you have? Me? I have about, right now, I have two houses. Well, I have how many houses? This house. So I cut, I cut off a lot of units. I got, I have a total of, I have 470 listings on Airbnb in total. But wow, not, you're uh, killing it. Yeah, they're not all active because I, I, I do like a, I, I found a way to arbitrage without getting leases. So I, I have a bunch of timeshares I just rent out across the okay. nation. And I just take the cut out of that. And then I also have a condo, but it's a corporate lease now. But I've been trying to turn the corporate lease condo that's mine into a assisted living facility. I've been trying to do that for the longest okay. time. State. I'm going to go to the state and talk about it. But I have about, yeah, it's about 400 plus listings on Airbnb. Yeah, that's a, how long have you been doing it? Um, I started February 2017. Two years. Oh man, you got in and killed it. Wow. Yeah. That's exponential growth. That's amazing. Yeah, but I'm trying to I'm I'm investing like most of my money in like to the technology around Airbnb because I see that's where a lot of the people are making their money now. It's like off these okay. little apps. You know, like the turnover B and B and the smart the price labs and stuff like that. That's what like people are making like Steve always calls it the picks and shovels. <laughs> Yeah, that's a way. That's a so. What you're paying for development and like working on a new one or something? No, well, not even a new Airbnb, just like a new development to automate some of my systems that I have a VA do. If I can eliminate the need for a VA and more or less have technology be the main put basis, then I I can save on a lot of costs and increase my revenue. Oh man. Yeah. So it's it's just a matter of you know finding what works. So the um, Live, Let, Thrive app coming soon, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll definitely be checking for it. You definitely done your research. I can tell that just from a few minutes on the, you know, on the, on the, on the voice call with you. Yeah. So where, where else do you advertise? Do you advertise anywhere else besides Airbnb? Mm -mm, just on the platform. Platform. Yeah. See, see, you, you probably in, yeah, in Allegheny County where you're in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed like VRBO is more or less. A lot of rural, out of, out of their places, but you will get more money on VRBO though. Like I do uh, booking, booking dot com too. Yeah. Does that work? How did not? How, what? Do you, I'm gonna shut them down. I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> booking dot com at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've put one of my places back up there on booking because um, I was down in Miami with some old friends of ours, and they told me get on booking dot com because they automated it, which the automations are pretty good that they have now, but. I haven't, I got, I have one reservation through there at my new place that I listed, but they canceled, so. Yeah, that's what I get a lot of people that cancel. And whenever they cancel, it doesn't take it off of my Airbnb calendar. So that day will show still blocked on my Airbnb calendar. So, I mean, I guess I could have probably called somebody about it, but you know, I don't, I don't get that many listings through it. So whenever, you know, the email comes through or that, you know, the notification pops on the phone, I just go into the app and manually unblock it. Yeah, you should, yeah. You should, you should definitely check out Homeway and VRBO, only because it's like baby boomers are on there and they're willing to pay double of what they pay on Airbnb. Like I've rented a room out, a private room upstairs that I usually rent between 30 to 50 a night for like 80 a night. Just wow. Just like an older couple. Oh, and Homeaway is VRBO, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, man. But yeah, man, you're, you're killing it. All you need is just, you keep growing, man. It's it's going to shoot through the roof for you, man. <laughs> I was like, when you proposed, I was like, hey, two houses, on it, geez. I like, I like that model of how you set up those suites. Yeah, the suites turned out to be a really good thing. And you know what the wild thing is about the suites? The whole, I've had it open since 2018, January of 18. And right now, in August, Rossini's about to move, but the first year I had James there, who was uh, he was working for the power company. For some reason, they were like working up here. I ran out the suite for twelve hundred dollars a month. And you got four of them, and I have four of them in it. So I mean, you know, even off of Airbnb, it still makes sense because the mortgage on that house I think is like a thousand dollars. It's a little bit over a thousand dollars. So you know, I could put, <laughs> I could put, you know, just even if I wanted to keep it legal. 
I could do three suites that were rented out for 1200 a month. And we have traveling nurses, all kinds of stuff that comes in the Pittsburgh. So, you know, like that, it, it, it works off the site as well, you know. Man, that, that's the killer right there. If you get those travel nurses, 1200 a month for three, four, man. Mortgage is 1000 Oh, yeah, you're in there. You in there. Yeah, screw, yeah. Screw Airbnb. I'd be doing that. Just rent all four like that. <laughs> you know what? The reason why I don't is just because uh, the inspector, whenever he came over, like, you know, when I was closing out the building permits and all of that, he walked through and was like, there's four suites in here. Well, you know, you know, if we catch you renting the four people long term, there's like six figure fines. Like, I don't know. You know how sometimes cops and inspectors make it sound like it's worse than what it actually is. So I don't know if he was, you know, exaggerating. I imagine he was, but he said enough to scare me out of it. I said, you know what? I'll just keep these on Airbnb until I do some research into it, you know? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Dang. So if you go over 30 days, they can, it breaks the code. Right. I mean, but if somebody tells them, but thankfully my houses are in the hood, so who's telling? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us about your, um, how you, how you're putting these videos out there. Cause that's a really cool concept and that's starting to spread, you know, spread the word on what you're doing. I mean, how, how is that working for you? How'd you get into that? Well, you know what, whenever, uh, what in November, Last November, I started a construction company. So I was doing, you know, construction. Like the first few videos, I'm like just kind of like on my own project, working on it and stuff like that. And it was really so I could get extra money to get the uh, assisted living house up and running. Well, once I got that up and running, I realized that working for other people is annoying. So I'm like, you know what? Let's shut down the construction. So I, the, the whole point of the YouTube channel was originally just a business card for the construction, just so people could see what was going on. And most of my jobs I got through either YouTube or Facebook videos. And you know, it worked out pretty well, but now that I don't do that anymore, I just kind of put it on there for information. Like, you know, if somebody can get some value out of it, then, you know, I'd share it. And I like talking about this kind of stuff. So, you know, it's like a hobby for me as well. So that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Is he using any other outlet, outlets like Instagram or Facebook to promote? Oh, the videos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whenever I uh, Usually whenever I drop a video, I put it on Facebook, uh, Facebook groups and Instagram. But, you know, I don't have much of a following on Instagram. I think my biggest account has like 500 people. So, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people that see it. But it's, it's funny because whenever I'm out around Pittsburgh, a lot of people know me. Oh, I have like a big F-250, like a lifted 2019. It gets a bunch of attention. You know, it's a platinum. And uh, I have my logos for the YouTube channel on there. So like a lot of people that see me around Pittsburgh, you know, like we stop and talk real estate. I meet realtors. It's just really good for networking, having the YouTube channel, even if you're not making money off of it. And you create a community where you can talk about topics that you want to talk about, you know? Man, so, hold on. You're, so, you're promoting on like your cars and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. The truck. As a matter of fact, the, the video that I just posted like two days ago, I uh, show the YouTube thing on the side of the truck whenever I'm like doing a little intro into the video. I was talking about how if you're buying a house, you should get a sewer camera because uh, that sewer line, you're responsible for it to where it catches the main. So if it catches the main across the street and through the neighbor's yard, that's what you're responsible to for. So $150 for a sewer camera can save you thousands, tens of thousands, depending on where that main's at, it can save you so much money. But in that video, I'd like show part of the truck, you know, while I was going through it. So where, where are you keeping your shirts made at with your YouTube and all that on it? Oh, uh, Artista Graphics, little local place in here. Hey, wait, let me turn this on so I can get some light. Oh man, we gotta start doing that on the truck. I like that idea, man. That's smart, man. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know what? Just uh, here, let me wait for it to stop beeping. Uh, the door's open. That's why. Okay. So yeah, just uh, I I used to. Uh, I remember I was doing a job over in Homestead, and I leave out from my uh, from my townhouse. And I noticed this blue Impala just following behind me. And I was like, oh, that's weird. You know, went to the job site, get to the job site, 
leave out around like 10 o'clock to run over to the Airbnbs, turn them over real quick. The same blue Impala's behind me again. So I'm like, why is there a car following me? So then I get back to the job site. Now there's an Explorer sitting outside the job site, right? And sometimes whenever you're younger, I saw an $80,000 truck and they see the Corvette and all that, they assume things about you. So having that built for builds on there, you if you have any questions, you can go right on my YouTube and see exactly what I'm doing and how I'm making my money. And uh, so, uh, you know, it, it actually works out pretty well on, on that regards too, because man, people are funny out here. Like, <laughs> Wow. Yeah. yeah. You got to face that scrutiny. I know what you mean. So, hey, so I mean, you know, it's a, it's a blessing, but. So also, so you, you're advertising on your truck. So you, your whole truck is a, is a financial write-off, right? Because it's a, it's oh, yeah. a billboard. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the reason why I bought it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have spent 80 on a truck if it wasn't. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> so it's a business expense. It's Straight a up. business expense with massage seats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Sam. Thank you for All that. Right. <laughs> and you know, um, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, what was was it? My accountant was telling me about it, and basically the concept is is you can buy something and like like, like the truck. I could buy it and write off the whole value of the truck the first year. So if you know you're going to have a heavy tax liability that, that year, that's why you'll see a lot of big trucks for, for construction companies because they're buying them and trading them in every year. And if you buy a diesel, it doesn't depreciate that much. So you can literally get that whole tax break and then trade the truck in and you really didn't spend that much money to hold it for a year. So there was that too. Yeah, something like advanced depreciation or something like that. Yeah, I think she called it like section, it was like a, some kind of section, like section 209 or I can't remember exactly what it was called. I'll have to ask her. You do that too, Micah? Are your vehicle's business expenses? Yeah, my, my truck is. I, I definitely use my truck as a business expense. And I'm about to definitely, I'm about to put some more uh, expenses on it when I put the, the Live Let Thrive logo up there. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> good idea, man. We've learned a lot tonight. Oh man, this is awesome! Hey, um, so did I, man. man you guys are. It's, I've I've never sat down and talked to other hosts before, so it's cool talking to y'all. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Um, so so what would be? I always ask this question. One uh, from doing Airbnb from and um, you you got your own experiences and stuff. Your own, you know, the way you do things. And what is one thing that you like? One tip that that's a David a DFW tip that you can mm. give our listeners that one thing that you haven't really heard anywhere before you're like, Oh, this is, this is legit. This is what I, I, I want to tell people. DFW says jet tubs and rain heads <laughs> <laughs> coming back. <laughs> but seriously, if you look through my reviews on, um, I think it's Dave's place, Pittsburgh. And uh, you'll see everyone mentions that bathtub. And whenever I have guests that come back, as a matter of fact, suite three, the one that I rent out on a long-term basis, it doesn't have a jet tub. And no one misses it because, you know, there's no jet tub. That that's has a lot to do with the allure. So if you're in an area where there's no attractions within walking distance or no other reason for them to come to your listing, you need something. You either need like a nice floor plan or even a nice decorating. That could pull people in because Airbnb is all based off of pictures. So if you can sell, show them something unique, you'll get listings, uh, bookings, bookings, hopefully. Sweet. Jet tubs and okay. Jet uh, <laughs> tubs and rain heads. That's it. <laughs> like Sounds like a song or something. <laughs> man, well, this has been a great interview, you know man. Should you should. <laughs> It'll be your intro to your, um, to your YouTube videos. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you catch it on YouTube. Jet tubs and rain heads. <laughs> Jet tubs and rain heads. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but man. <laughs> where, the, where the girls go, the guys follow, right? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, cool, man. This has been a great interview. Uh, what, so where can people find you? 
YouTube at Built for Builds. It's built the number four builds. All one word. Yeah, I'll definitely be advertising that and your Instagram, all that, man. Man, it was good talking to you. Keep up with those videos. I like those videos. I appreciate it, bro. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, um, you know, y'all know I'm just getting started with it. So the only downside to starting a YouTube is when people are like, oh, how many subscribers do you have? I'm like, 91. I think it's 93 now, but whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I just like building stuff. So, you know, I'll, I'll be happy once, you know, I finally hit that thousand mark, you know? Definitely. Sweet. Right. Well, it's great talking to you, man. We hope to interview you again in the future and uh, good luck on your, on your journey. All right, cool. Appreciate it, guys. Definitely. Peace. Later. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Live, Let, Thrive. Be sure to tune in next week for all the latest in the world of Airbnb and all that entails. Bye-bye.